Joseph Estrada. Former President of the Philippines. At the very beginning, before he has been officially elected as president, he used the art of manipulation to create a land of make-believe by using the poverty circumstances of the majority of the Philippines against them in order to aid in his campaign and manifesto which obviously helped in his election process as he somehow predicted that, it's the only way to gain the respect and voting favor of the lower class first so that the higher society members could recognize him as being a true president that is there to genuinely improve the well-being of the people starting from the lowest to the highest highest in society. To his shame, there was obviously an ulterior motive behind his charade that he managed to put on as he's won the votes and has been elected as president of the Philippines in those years. Joseph now counted among the most corrupt politicians of the world, had started off as an actor in his early life and no wonder he was able to pull this off successfully in deceiving the people who genuinely believed and saw a ray of hope in him. Joseph Estrada has been corrupt since before he even became president, and sadly the Philippines were too vulnerable to see it. Joseph Estrada has been accused and brought to books and is believed to have taken more than $80 million in bribes and corrupt dealings. Arnel Tuailman Former President of Nicaragua Being the 81st president of any country should be a huge honor to every man. Regardless of how many presidents were before you, the president title simply means, head of the nation, leader of an entire country, world recognition, being an official part of a country's history etc. However some people seem to not realize the novelty, importance, honor and integrity of their presidential titles and tend to abuse the privileges handed to them by the state. Presidents are under oath too, however for some people like Arnelto, all this doesn't mean as much as having all of the world's riches that exceeds his pay which was bound to spark and arouse suspicions. Ailman has pursued the career of being a lawyer before presidency and that alone should tell you that his oath and promise to the law, the country, should have been stronger than ever. We may give credit to his personal success as a lawyer, then running for mayor of Nicaragua and then president and then one of the most corrupt politicians ever. Quite an outstanding and successful career development in politics and business too and the perfect way to be sentenced to 20 years of imprisonment for corruption by the embezzlement of more than $100 million from Nicaragua's treasury, treasury. Pablo Lazarenko Former Prime Minister of Ukraine the common pattern amongst each of these corrupt organizations or individuals is that each one sets a trend that goes higher than the last corrupted individual. It's strangely almost like a competition of who can steal the most amount of money or be the nation's most corrupted politicians. It is rather amazing and stupid as well, what some individuals need to do gain a place in the history of the world but for the wrong reasons. Pavlo on the other hand seems to have done extremely well in his illegal and unlawful acts during the duration of his time as just a mere PM, Prime Minister, not even the President in this case. Still regardless of being the Prime Minister, it was in Pavlo's plan to use the President as a shield or to divert all attention from him, so that he could continue to go on his quest for fraudulent activities that are to the estimated corruption value of $200 million which seems to have mysteriously disappeared and later revealed that part of it has been used to sign a $10 billion deal abusing office rights and terms. Most definitely creates a big title on the forehead of Pavlo to have been one of the most corrupt politicians of the world to have been able to sneak a value of $200 million under the carpet or out of the visibility of authorities concerned. Alberto Fujimori Former President of Peru A funny name this man has, but a clever mindset. Cleverer than all his other corrupt pals thus far as the amount estimated and his corruption ranking value is rather staggering. Corrupt presidents among the most corrupt politicians isn't an uncommon thing in this case, it's just that some of them are a little bit more intelligent in their corruption parades that they were able to milk more out of the state than the rest before they've been brought to legal justice. Alberto Fujimori is of an Asian descent which primarily means discipline sharp-witted, and intelligent as well as mentally sharp since they have that Asian blood which is known to the world for their attention to detail type of style and everything they say and do which ensures order and precision in most cases. 
In the case of Alberto Fujimori however and his corruption in presidency has gotten over his head of the nation accolade. It doesn't mean that if a man is dressed with sharp suits, speaks in polite speech mannerisms and carries himself out with professionalism in the public eye, that he won't be capable of corruption to some hectic degrees, kidnapping and murder as well as guilty by court of law in his act of ordering death squad military men to do the dirty work of kidnappings and killings during his presidency and with an estimated fraud value of $600 million stolen from the state, from the state. Jean-Claude Duvalier Former President of Haiti We all know that action star, Jean, Claude Van Damme has been the bad boy dominating the action genre of Hollywood since the 80s and there was only one of him. Jean, Claude Duvalier on the other hand, obviously tried to imitate this actor in reality due to his first name being the same, and very humorously couldn't come close it seems. Some people in power have seemed to be waving the flag of a common trend that having president title simply means I own everything and everybody in the country and this is where abuse of power gets the best of their morality and beliefs and basically everything else changes once somebody comes into full power and control, it wouldn't be very long until their power is taken to head where everything is now swindled by their intimidating and authority figure finger. Devalier is one of the most corrupt politicians ever. Everything seems to point in the direction of corruption from here onward. Like father, like son they say it seems as though Papa Duvalier, the father of Jean, Claude Duvalier has been terrorizing Haiti for more than a decade to which the name struck fear in the locals. The man that claimed to bring about an economical revolution to Haiti's starving population, felt nothing to embezzle between $300 to $800 million during his time in office. Surely one of the most corrupt politicians of the world, of the world. Sani Abaka. Former president of Nigeria. Nigeria as it stands to the world is automatically classed as a war-torn country and quite frankly, who could blame the world for thinking so lowly of them when civil war seems to be so popular, the locals are somewhat getting better at it. War-torn countries, require a leader that can turn an entire nation around command in operations of war and actually win at it to protect the name and people of the country. Not every leader appointed and elected into presidency or parliament or a high-profiled position in a country sees for the actual needs of the people and meets demands of what needs to be changed urgently for the better of those protesting legally for it. There will always be a need of self-improvement, personal greed while the rest will suffer dearly and that ultimately becomes the major downfall of every country thereafter where as bad as things are as it is, will become worse after a man so-called leader like Sani Akaba who is often regarded as one of the most corrupt politicians, could steal around $4 billion into personal private accounts as well as jewelry to the value that could supply a 100 years salary to the average Nigerian which was attempted to be stolen from his residence by robbers that police have discovered and ironically though after the immediate shock of his death, his wife tried to flee with four suitcases of stolen money also. This is where hilariously, the robber gets robbed and dead too, by his own wife. It's more of a comical act of fraudulence rather than a clever one. Mr. Ray Kaba earns himself the title of one of the funniest corrupt politicians that the world has seen. Slobodan Milosevic. Former President of Yugoslavia. In terms of fraud, one could ask oneself, what is the limit that somebody could reach in terms of the amount of money they could take from the country without being caught and for how long can they pull this off? There must be a certain genius behind this as it isn't as easy as mugging a homeless man on the street of his last penny to steal from something as large as an entire country. Mr. Milosevic however has gone beyond just money fraud in this case and has been convicted according to BBC's report of some high-profiled killings and being the head behind assassination attacks, killing of witnesses or people who were brave enough to bring him to justice. Plus he's also one of the most corrupt politicians on our planet. Power
power driven men, know no extremes in terms of where they power boundaries are when in office or in presidency as they sincerely believe that they control and own everything that the country has, including the people, where human rights and constitutions are just pieces of paper with fancy writing on it since none of these seem to genuinely matter when they are committing fraudulent acts themselves and in this case, not in small petty numbers as this one really reached the extreme fraud bars. $100 billion shelled out to compensate for campaign bombings that took place and causing collateral damage to this estimated worth and figure is no joke and certainly not a child's game. Presidents are supposed to bring about peace in their countries and not inflict war with others. All this by the handiwork of one man and his accomplices, Slobodan Milosevic who even notoriously earned himself a street named after him. Mobutu Sisi Seko. Former President of Zaire. From this point on, the story of fraudulent tax become interlinked with each below this rank, as it seems that the next two rankings below Mobutu Sisi Seko has been interlinked and confirmed as accomplices that were involved in what is estimated to be a $50 billion three-man scorn from all three of the countries that these men represent such as, Zaire, Philippines, and Indonesia. This is actually the sum equal to the yearly budget of the West. How the three men managed to pull this off is somewhat of a mystery, let the other two remain a mystery for now. Mobutu Sisi Seko is ranked among the most corrupt politicians in the world and part of the three-man tag team cross-country in the reign of joint venture powerment fraud commitments and dedication, has personally been reported to embezzle an estimated amount of around 12 billion by himself. These figures certainly don't lie and isn't exaggerated either, dreaded either. Ferdinand Marcos Former President of the Philippines As part of the Three Musketeers and why we call them Marketeers is due to their ability to put on a reputable and accountable appearance to their public of being respectable leaders of the country until that mask comes out and the robbers are revealed, it's not inappropriate to call them masked robbers either. And with this mask they sure did create a phantom of their very own opera, dramatic play. Yes. You've guessed it. Ferdinand Marcos, former president of the Philippines, is mystery man too in the three-man joint venture of billions to be estimated amongst each other with regards to their fraudulent tax. It seems as though the Philippines, sure knows how to elect their presidents, only to shoot themselves in the foot not once but on two very unwise choices of presidents. Making the same mistake twice is considered as insanity, but then again, who are they to know who's going to rob the entire nation until it happens? Ferdinand Marcos has been reported to have stolen $5 to $10 billion of his own as well during the years 1972 to 1986 in his time of presidency. He came second in our list of most corrupt politicians in the planet, in the planet. Mohamed Suhardo. Former President of Indonesia. Mystery man that ranks number one on the list of the most corrupt politicians in the world is Mohamed Suharto seeing as because he's managed to top the cake with the shiny looking cherry of being able to take more than his joint venture pals, Mobutu and Ferdinand, M and F. The value that he is worth and the estimated value of notorious presidential fraud, it actually deserves a campaign or game show of its own where the winner of who can embezzle the most out of a country wins and Mohamed Suharto seemed to have won it big during his 30-year presidential duration of office in the country's highest seat. During this time of presidency, it would have obviously given Mr. Suharto more than enough time to take a few billions for himself and to absolutely no surprise did he surpass the fraudulent amount of the rest reaching a staggering figure of $15-35 billion in stone cold hard assets and Swiss accounts that were perfectly legal in terms of its existence, but yet again, where money talks, the corrupteers will listen very closely and so it has been pulled off. What makes Mohamed Suharto the most corrupt politician of the world isn't just because of his fraudulent rank rate being the highest in personal embezzlement but due to managing to put up a decent, honest and upstanding leader of the nation for 30 years. 
a man that long in presidency can be accused even without evidence for fabricating votes every now and then or banking hard on campaigns to make the greatest impression every year to the vulnerable people who were just forced to believe it, to believe it.